time so far? We are gathered here tonight for the induction of the 2019 class to the Central Auto Racing Boosters Hall of Fame. And before we get started, I want to recognize uh, a couple of folks that uh, we uh, lost here in recent weeks. Uh, former Hall of Fame members were uh, thinking about Thurman Lovejoy and Super Joe Wallace. Uh, CARB Hall of Famers who we've lost in recent weeks. Let's bow our heads for a moment of silence in recognition to those Hall of Famers and all others that we've lost here in this past year. Thank you. Don opened Burlington Performance in 1998, building championship engines with his son, Donald Jr. His impact has been felt for over 50 years around both the drag strip as well as the asphalt and dirt tracks in the Kansas City area and beyond. Don Burlington. We lost Don in March of this last year and here to accept this great honor, his wife, Sharon. Sharon, who had the biggest impact on Don's life, would you say? I would say one main thing is his children. Uh, he had Dory's children, and he wanted a son, and when I was pregnant with, with little Don, I said, it's got to be a boy. you got to help me. It's got to be a boy, because we didn't have Lisa, and thank God it was a boy, and he was, he forgot that I was sitting in the car when he brought me home, and I couldn't hardly walk, <laughs> and he, he, grabbed, he grabbed the baby, went in the house, and I'm still sitting there, so I had to get myself out of the car and go in the door, so that, his kids were the, was the main thing. Who was Don's hero? in the racing world? I would think, looking back at everything, I know he looked up to his dad a lot. Sometimes him and his dad didn't agree on everything, but I think he, he had his dad, and then when our son started racing, our son was his whole life racing. So I'm gonna say our son. What do you think Don would like to be remembered for? His racing career, building the engines. He enjoyed it more building the engines than he did racing himself. He really enjoyed when our son took it up. He kind of wished that Lisa got into it sooner because she liked it when she got older. But uh, his proudest moment is when little Don was racing. If he could relive one moment in his life, be it to enjoy it over again or to do it differently, which moment would you say he might pick? As far as the racing career? Any moment. Okay. His, the, other, the other thing that he really enjoys, when we first opened our business, he was so good at it when he was doing it on the side or doing it for free and he was making all these guys fast and not making anything for it and he'd go out of his way to help anybody. He'd close our shop down to go help a lot of people and he did that for Nick Vinegar and he did it for a couple other guys so they could race come Saturday or Friday night. If people were to say two character traits uh, that represented Don, what, what do you feel that those might be? He, he, there were several. I mean, there's no anything specific, I don't think. Um, he just, just loved the racing. Um, he loved drag racing, and then he loved the dirt track racing. I mean, if he could have went the last six months, he would have went, because we tried several times, and. He got sick on the way, so we had to stay home. But racing besides his children was his whole life. 
you know, dad had his own way, a certain way to tell he was proud of you and what you did. And he was very, you know, towards the end, because I said to him, like, I don't know, dad, if I can do this after you're gone. Because it's, it's just going to be too hard to be at a track, because that's what we did. It was a family deal. It truly is a family deal. Where you find one, you find the other. Right. And he's like, well, you know, you're good at what you do. He goes, I don't want you to stop because I'm not here anymore. He goes, but it's up to you. I said, okay, but it's going to be hard because he always sat in turn four. And I always still look up there. And then I do all this before I go out there. And it was, it's not, it's, this is not about me. It's about my family, about his name and his legacy. So Changing it up a little bit here. Right on. <laughs> um, Lisa, I know you're uh, a believer in signs, as you've yes, shared. Yes, yes. Um, would you feel comfortable enough to share any, anything that you might feel might have been communicated to you since your father's passing that you felt was a sign that either things were okay or, or he's trying to tell you something? Yeah, uh, the day that we brought his ashes home, I was, you know, which was very hard, you know. Uh, we have this back deck and we've lived there for 20 years and I was getting ready for work and there was these two pigeons. I've never seen a bird land on the top deck ever. And I was getting ready for work and I look, I just have to look outside the door. This one turns around to me and just looks at me and is looking at me for a long, long time. And the wind is blowing like hard. I'm thinking, how are these, how are these pigeons staying on there? One day he just, just turned around and looked at me for a long time and then I just, I knew. You know, mom even had an incident here recently. So, but yeah, I, that was the first, that was the first sign that I knew he's okay. He's good and he's always around us. He's done it to me the track too because they, he and mom both worried about me being out there because it is very dangerous out there. People don't realize that, but it's very dangerous out there. Um, well, I don't know, maybe it was July. I was getting in turn four at Lakeside. I got a little too, a little brave because you do that sometimes. It's a false sense of security. And it was muggy, hot, no wind. And I kid you not, all of a sudden this wind came and I got out there this wind came up, and I knew that was Dad. Come, you need to get back, Marie, Lisa Marie. And I kid you not, that very next lap after the caution, there was a wreck there. That like three or four B mods ran right where I was just at, so I knew that was him. He looks after. I he looks after all of us. I I feel him, so he'd be proud of this. What do you feel is something that you take with you? throughout the rest of your life um, that your dad may have instilled in you? Love of racing. I mean, and you know, be humble. Don't, don't, you know, be good at what you do and be humble. Don't be out there, you know, being a braggart. He was a very humble person. I mean, he knew he was good, but he didn't go around saying, look at me, I'm good, you know. That being humble and just being, you know, involved in racing because that's what he loved and we we all love it. So I think that's it. Yeah. My dad was my father and my best friend. So a part of me, I had said, as I told my mom, I think he was my whole life. Mm -hmm. I said, if it wasn't for my kids, I I would I would never hurt myself. But I don't know what I would be doing right now. I don't think I would care. I mean, I'd be honest with you. I, I struggle with that every day. You know, that of just because uh, it's. It, I, I'm fine. I'll, I'll be bullshit with one of my friends at work, and I'll pass somewhere, and it's just like, God dang it, man! You know, and especially when I I got to go to Sedalia a lot or cut through yeah. Raytown. I drive by our old shop. It's a liquor store, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And I'm not, you know, I just it just it's hard, man. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know how my mom does. I mean, for all the years. What are some things that you might want to say to? Man, I miss you and I love you. Pretty much sums it all up for me. Larry has been involved for many decades as a car owner, mechanic, race official, and sponsor. He toured as an official for years with the World of Outlaws and also as a track official at the 65 Speedway and State Fair Speedway in Sedalia, Lake Ozark Speedway, Savannah, Bethany, Knoxville, and the old NSCA organization. Tonight, we honor a dear friend of racing and everyone joining us here tonight Make welcome to our newest member of the Central Auto Racing Boosters Hall of Fame, Larry Christie. Larry, who has had the biggest impact on your life? Wow. Um, I'll 
I'll probably be honest with my wife. Because when we decided that, when I decided to go racing, she backed me 100%. And she worked to help support the racing. So, I, I mean, you know, I, I'm going to have to say her. Who was your hero growing up? Oh, gosh. I, I don't know. There was uh, a couple, three of them. There was uh, Walter Sorrells, down who lived down in Columbia, had a salvage yard. Roy and Russell Hibbert. Uh, Bill Oots, you know, there was there, Ken Taylor, they, they was pretty well up on the list. What would you like to be known or remembered for? Oh, um, I don't know. Just being a nice guy and trying to help who I can help and when I can help, you know. You know, there's a lot of times at Wisdom Racetrack, people would come and ask us, you know, what we was doing or how the setup or something was. And we'd tell them, you know. And we'd always tell them, you know, because that way they'd stay out of your way. Mm -hmm. So, but that, that's, that's about it. If you could relive one moment in your life, be it to enjoy it over again or to do it differently, what would that moment be? <laughs> I, right off the top of my head, I can't. I can't think of anything right off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. You named a few earlier that you said stood out to you, three uh, that stood out to you. What's one of your highlights of, of your career and your life in general that stands out to you? Oh, like I say, the biggest, you know, the, the biggest in my career, which I feel like I had a very, very successful sped car career. Very successful. Didn't make any money, but I'm very... But I, I'd say, like I said before, winning the, the feature in Knoxville and winning the mile in today, that's two of the biggest things that, that you know, really, I'm really proud of. Thank you, Larry. That's Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Mechanic, car owner, official, and sponsor spanning 40 years of racing. racing. Congratulations again, Larry, on being Thank inducted you. into the Car Hall of Fame. I'm very, very honored, very honored, you know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big honor to me. Yeah. I don't think it's really sunk Some in game. yet, to be honest, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm, I'm very happy, very happy. Yeah. You know? And I wanna thank Carb and them for it too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what character traits does it take to be a Hall of Famer? Oh boy. Whoa. Dedication. Yeah. Yeah. Dedication. Dedication would be the biggest thing. Yeah. What's the yeah. biggest risk each of you have ever taken in your life that you feel paid off? <laughs> Getting into racing. <laughs> Being in the field <laughs> at a racetrack. Being involved in racing. Yeah. What do you feel is the biggest change that has taken place in the evolution of racing during your lifetime? Money. Money. Lots of yes. money. Yes. Yeah. Money. Second that. Money, money, money. Yeah. money. Technology. Yeah. yeah. What is the best advice you can give the next generation of racers? Have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Good sponsors. Job. Good job. Lots of sponsors. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you all. Right. Harold started racing in the mid-50s at J.C. Speedway in Excelsior Springs. He lived only a half mile from the track and couldn't resist the sound and at the age of 35 decided to put his mechanic skills to use from his day job to work on building his own race car. And here tonight, Harold Havilo is a Hall of Famer and we honor the memory of Harold who passed in 1999, his son Phil is here to accept on behalf of the Havilo family. Ladies and gentlemen, our newest member to the Central Auto Racing Boosters Hall of Fame, Harold Havilo. Phil, who would you say Harold would say had the biggest impact on his life? On his life or his racing? His life in general. My mom. She guided him through life just like most wives do and keep you on the straight and narrow. Now, my mom, I'd say, would be the one. 
And with racing, it'd probably be Elmer. Mm -hmm. What would you say that Harold was most remembered or known for? I would hope, from a racing standpoint, he was a clean driver. He he didn't try to drive dirty. And you, know, you might think I'm a little biased because his son, but no. I, I remember watching a lot of racing and a lot of moves on the track. I paid attention. And I think he drove about as clean as anybody else. Other than after that, I what he was known for, probably his mechanical ability, because he was pretty sharp about that stuff as a fabricator and as a mechanic. What was one moment in your dad's life that if he had the chance to, to relive over, uh, what, what would that moment be? Whoa, that, well, that would be a good one to ask about that because I don't, he didn't talk a lot about stuff like that. I, I, I really don't know what it would be because I, I can't think of any negatives that jump out that I think my dad saw as, as a major negative mm -hmm. that I would remember. Who was his hero? Hmm. That's another good question because he didn't talk about talk about that too much. But if I was to guess, I would say AJ Foy. Yeah, of the time. Yeah, back then, or Jed Larson. Yeah. Well, thank you, Phil. Uh -huh. Phil, congratulations once again on your father's induction into the Hall of Fame, and uh, I'm sure, like you say, you've got to be well pleased. Oh, I'm I'm tickled. You know, it was just it was. It was a really good moment for myself, my family. I just, too bad my dad couldn't be there to enjoy it. Absolutely. And I, you know, I, I probably didn't thank Carb enough when I was there, but they have no idea what this has meant to my family. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate them doing this. Yeah. She's literally done it all from driver, car owner, and mechanic to race official, and yes, even just being a fan. Linda Howe has worked at 16 tracks in Kansas, Missouri, and Iowa. Her numerous awards through the years is a true testament why she is a Hall of Famer. Let's make welcome Linda Burke Howell as she enters the car of the Hall of Fame. Who's had the biggest impact on your life? Well, I would say um, my dad did when it comes to the racing because that's what we always did as a family, so. What would you like to be remembered or known for? I'd like to be remembered as that person that personally greeted every driver by their first name when they checked in with me, and I did it with a smile. If you could relive one moment in your life, be it to enjoy it over or to do it differently, what would that moment be? That's a tough one. Um, I don't know. The one thing that I really would do over again is uh, the uh, IMCA Super Nationals. For about six years, I helped uh, Everett Sather and, and Robert Lawton out with the, the Super Nationals, and that was, that was a blast. Six, seven days of racing, it was a blast. Marathon. So I would do that all over again. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Linda, congratulations as you follow your dad into the Car Hall of Fame. Great time and career in racing, but it's not over yet, girl. No, it's not. I like like I said at the banquet, I've got my daughter, she's I've taught her how to score. Uh, my two of my teenage granddaughters have run scoreboard and actually my oldest granddaughter when I was working at Thunder Lake. When she was four years old, and you'll love this, Justin, when she was four years old, she sat next to me and she was actually writing the car numbers oh, down, really? the cart numbers down as they were coming by. And I never pushed her to do it. Yeah. But now she's, she'll be graduating from high school this summer. She wants to learn how to score and start following in her mother's footsteps. So we've got oh. the fourth generation of the Burke Racing Clan going. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Even open heart surgery several years ago didn't stop him or his competitive drive to win, which he's still doing to this Already day. Already the stuff of legends. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome our newest member of the Central Auto Racing Boosters Hall of Fame, Chad Lyle. Chad, who's had the biggest impact on your life? I would say my dad. 
Uh, it had to be my dad. He's He's been probably my biggest mentor as far as anybody I need to lean on or talk to or anybody that, I, you know, if I had problems, you know, he was the guy I would go to. So uh, I'd have to say my dad. What would you like to be known or remembered for? Uh, that's a good question. I did, uh, a good, hard, clean racer uh, that would finish second rather than just take you out, and, you know, just for another win. If you could relive one moment in your life, whether to enjoy it again or change it, what would it be? One moment? Um, not really. I mean, yeah, I, I, I take it back. I got one for you. I think I would have went ahead and done the Scott Trailer uh, Arca race at the Kansas Speedway when it was offered to me back in, I believe that was 2001 and 2002. And they offered it to me both years. It was a, you know, it was a buy in deal, but uh, that would have given me uh, an experience that I probably would have never, you know, you'd never forget that running up there. Now, if I had won the Arca race, would it make you go to NASCAR? Probably absolutely not, you know? So, but it would have been fun. It would have been something to look That'd be one thing I regret. Thanks a lot, Chad. That's all I've got, guys. Yep. Just want to say congratulations to another driver that has been at the top of his generation of drivers for quite a while. Entering into a card hall of fame with checkered flags waving over your head and a place waiting for you in the winter circle, Chad. Congratulations, man, on Thank being you. inducted into the card hall of fame. Thank you very much. What character traits does it take to be a hall of famer? Linda, let's start with you. Well, I think it's the passion for the sport. Uh, you've got the passion, you're going to put the time and effort in to, to earn this honor. I'm in total agreement with what she just said. It is definitely a passion. and uh, If you have it, you'll probably end up here. Exactly. Yeah, passion is the key to it, but you got to have drive and you got to have initiative and you got to want to win. And you've got to devote a lot of time to it. It's oh, not correct. a one and done. Yeah, it's, it's not sometimes a hobby, it's a job. Exactly. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken in your life that you feel paid off? Wow. <laughs> well, you know, um, I think just getting into my own stock car, building my own stock car, gave me a sense for what the drivers uh, do on the track. Wasn't good at it, but kind of gave me a sense for that and uh, a lot of respect for the drivers. I'd have to say mine would be quitting a really, really good job with great benefits to go racing. I'd say that would be, yeah. yeah. Speaking for my dad <clears throat> and considering the times back then, for him to work the job that he had and be able to support his family and start racing and make that kind of commitment to keep doing it and keep doing it until it started paying off for him. What do you feel is the biggest change that has taken place in the evolution of racing during your lifetimes? Wow, well, my folks started in the jalopy stage, so I've seen a lot of, a lot of changes over the years. Um, Looking at NASCAR, I see, you know, we got a lot of speed and now they're trying to rein that speed in. So I think it just kind of runs a full circle. Uh, we want to go fast, now we don't. To me, it's the money. Everything's that gotten, <laughs> it, it has grown and it's got the speed, but the money has, has changed racing and I'm not too sure it's always for the best. Technology's come a long way, so. You know, things that you didn't even think about 10 years ago, it's already here. You know, it's, it's incredible. Well, when you talk about technology, I think about a lot of the tracks have gone to automated scoring. Yep. Well, we haven't gotten that far at I-35 yet, and we're, we still hand score, so uh, a lot of changes over the years. Safety, to me, seeing what my dad started out with, with half helmets and AC belt, not shoulder straps, and how, look what we've evolved to now. The kind of seats, the apparel, the helmets, safety is 
grown tremendously. What's the best advice you can give to the next generation of racers? That's, that's a tough one too. Um, I don't know, it's, you either got it in your blood or you don't have it in your blood. And those that do, you know, volunteer, do whatever you can to get your foot in the door. Not everybody's cut out to be a race car driver. Uh, just, you know, if you, if you have the passion, that's how we used to get in free. We started doing things at the racetrack to help out. Um, I would say not everyone out there is going to have a rich mommy and daddy. So if you have enough determination, enough drive, enough passion, like we talked about earlier, um, and you're willing to basically sacrifice a lot, uh, you can you can make this and you can you can become successful with it. That Chad just took the words out of my mouth. The word that came to me was sacrifice. If you want to race and you have the passion, because it's going to take a passion, you better be ready to make the sacrifices that go with it. You know, it, it's worth it, but you just got to be willing to make that commitment and that sacrifice sometimes. But don't let it short your family. You know, racing starts out as a hobby; it can become a living. But there's a gap in between there. Take care of your family. to racing after 11 years in 1977 with Steve Kinzer driving their car and that year was Kinzer's first Knoxville Nationals. Later Kinzer would win a record 12 Knoxville Nationals but they, he got his start with the McCown brothers. The McCown racing family is now a Hall of Fame racing family. Ladies and gentlemen, the McCown racing family represented tonight by Larry McCown. Larry, who's had the biggest impact on your life, in or outside of racing? Oh, I think uh, probably my brother. He was, uh, <clears throat> he always had me under his wing, you know, all through the years. We were very close. Uh, what would you like to be known, or uh, do you think your family would like to be known or remembered for? Oh, I think, uh, uh, all the friendships that we've had through the years with fans, uh, other racers, uh, pit crew guys. I, I think I think we just uh, want to be part of the racing community. And, and I think that's what we needed to be uh, remembered for. Uh, our, our whole family has been involved in racing since the 50s. And, uh, and I still help, I still sponsor cars. And you know, I don't know how many cars I've painted through the years and never charged anybody, you know. <laughs> you know, but but it's just I think the racing racing community and families and people that you meet racing, you know, it's worth millions of dollars. I wouldn't take anything for them. If you could relive one moment in your life, be it to enjoy it over again or do it differently, what one moment would that be? Oh boy. You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, there's been so many, so many great things that have happened to us racing. Uh, gosh, we, we, we've raced a lot of times years ago uh, when we probably should have been paying bills at the house. You know, we'd go racing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I guess maybe uh, uh, racing-wise, I, I guess uh, I wish we would have been better off financially that we could have kept Steve. We just didn't have the bucks to keep him. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we, could, we could tell how good he was gonna be when we, when we first saw him run. I mean, he was kind of like Taylor. He was kind of in a class all his own, you know, in a, lot of, in a lot of ways. Taylor was a very smart guy. 
he was kind of ahead of his time when we built the car because he was in on everything and uh, there's a couple of things that 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 he did the race car that it was probably 10 or 15 years uh, in sprint car racing before they got to that. And, uh, but yeah, I would say that, you know, I wish we could have kept Steve, you know, and we've remained good friends all these years and are still good friends. He came down last year for the Missouri State Fair. It rained it out. He was going to be our grand marshal and sign autographs and stuff. And uh, he said, I don't want anything. I'm going to come down and help you. I said, Steve, you can't come down here. He said, no, trust me. He said, I want to come down and help you. And, so, and he knows Randy real well, too, Randy Combs. So. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. Yep. One more. <clears throat> Larry, from your father, Chick, and his love of racing and a giving heart, plus the foundation works of your brother, Wally, the workmanship of Merlin, and the promotional and work ethic that the family has had and has stood out as an example of the best that racing has to offer. Again, congratulations on being inducted into the Car Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it, our whole family does. We're gonna pass the, the, uh, the plaque around to the families and all of them can have it for a certain length of time, yeah. however they want it. And uh, they were all very proud to be there and as we all were, you know, uh, even Steve Kinder gave me a call and said, hey, congratulations. Oh, Accepting this award on behalf of Ed Young, who passed away in 1999, is Ed's son, Zeke, who worked many Friday nights watering the racetrack, the Red X store, started by Ed Young, and he is Mr. Riverside, and we're honoring him tonight as the longtime owner of Riverside Stadium going into the Carb Hall of Fame, E.H. Ed Young, here tonight to accept the Hall of Fame award, his son, Zeke Young. Zeke, you can answer on behalf of your dad, and if you're not for sure, go ahead and answer for yourself. Okay. Uh, who had the biggest impact in your dad's life, in or outside of racing, would you say? Yeah. Oh, in or outside of racing, biggest impact. That's a tough one. He always liked, he always talked about Will Rogers, uh, you know, <laughs> and he always liked him, liked how his outlook was on things, but uh, he just would get around people that, um, in, I'm not sure who they were that influenced him, but like I said, he did not uh, go to college, but he learned how to do all these things. Uh, he actually had a track scholarship to go to Texas A&M. But he knew that he probably couldn't survive a university or college education, so he didn't go. He said, another story about him, he said he passed three grades in one day. <laughs> and the way he did that, he got to school here, and they set him at a desk. He was supposed to be like in second grade, but they couldn't get it until they got up to a fifth grade desk. So he went from that up to fifth grade in one day. <laughs> uh, what, would you, what would you say your dad would like to be known or remembered for? Oh, just that uh, man of good humor, uh, like I've said before, a character, a whip character, a uh, man of his word, and again, he always tried to do what was best for everyone that he could. Uh, if he could relive uh, one moment in his life, whether to enjoy it over again or do it differently, what, what moment do you think that might be? Oh, there's so many moments for him. Uh, I think he, he he just enjoyed every day. <laughs> there, you know, the last twenty years or so, I'll, I'll never forget. After the '93 flood, he was eighty-one or eighty-two, something like that, and he was sitting down on the front church pew in front of the store. I asked him, "Is it Dad? What are you going to do?" Said, oh, these people need jobs. You know, he's going to open it back up, and that's just the way he thought. You know, he just loved the store. He loved Riverside, and he loved having the business. Well, that's all I got for you, Zeke. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once again, once again, Zeke, let me congratulate you on your dad's induction into the Carb Hall of Fame. I'm sure it's been quite an honor for you and your family. Oh yes, and there's several, a couple of people, you know, Ed Sanders and J.D. Cormack, and of course Karen Darling and Debbie Bergman, all those folks. Uh, Ed Sanders, you know, he's the first one to contact me, and he kept uh, yeah. Yeah. going with me here, and J.D. helped him, and. Uh, mm -hmm. If it hadn't been for them, uh, this wouldn't have happened. But again, the recognition, uh, thank you. 
at home. That's the main thing. And I know he'd be smiling. He'd, yeah. he'd get a kick out of that. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of fond memories coming Yes, from there. sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. That's all I got. That's it. Yeah. Uh, what character traits does it take to be a Hall of Famer? Oh boy, I, you know, we were talking about that a while ago. I, I think your experiences with people, uh, with fans and racers and, and your, your, your crews that, that go with you, I think that all kind of blends together. I, I think that. And dedication. Yes, And definitely. enthusiasm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's the biggest risk you've ever taken in your life that you feel paid off? Well, personally, I guess it would be our our racing because we raced many many times when we probably couldn't afford it, you know. And uh, it, it's all worked out in the long run. But there's many times I probably should have been paying bills at home, and we went <laughs> racing. What do you feel, Zeke? Well, um, taking it well, and I had to take over the business, but it's uh, it's been tough, but I've learned a lot, and uh, a lot of it rubbed off on me from Dad being around there. Uh, what do you feel is the biggest change that is taking place in the evolution of racing during your lifetime? Well, gosh, it looks like to me, but you know, get the NASCAR, those guys are real crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. there's so many rules and regulations and stuff, and it, it just kind of, you just wonder, if, you know, hey guys, let's kind of go back to the basics yeah. and go race. I think they'd be a lot better off, but, you know, that's kind of my take on it. I think just, you know, how the local tracks, and it's just not here in Kansas City, but probably nationwide, how that draws the people. I don't know if other, if that's dwindled or not, but uh, just the, being part of the community. Yeah, and, and it's a kind of a family deal. Like, like yeah. you guys' racetrack, yeah. Riverside and, and, and Lakeside and, and Sportsman Speedway and Marshall, mm -hmm. and the Missouri State Fairgrounds. It was kind yeah. of a neat deal when you went to race at those. Those were legends, mm -hmm. places to race. And uh, you know, I'd like to see it get back to that. But you're right. The rules, you watch it on TV uh -huh. now, and they're just uh, it's terrible. Making all these rules. What's the best advice you can give to the next generation of racers? Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, you know, uh, it, it costs so much to race today. And I, I, I guess maybe what things cost then, and maybe it isn't a whole lot of difference, but you know, you're running uh, 30, 40, $50,000 motors now, where, you know, guys who used to build their own motors, uh, everybody did. Uh, I would say, it, uh, Unless you can really afford it, don't do it. You know? <laughs> but, if, but guys are going to do it. The guys, if, yeah. racers are going to do it. I was going to say, if you do it, you know, you got to go at it full. But uh, you know, support the people. You bet. You know, that's one thing I've noticed on TV. It kind of seems like the crowds are doing the links up when they come out here to the Kansas Speedway. But I think you know, the support and uh, get behind them. And you know, if you don't think you'd ever like racing you ought to just try it one night if you don't think dirt is the way go to the asphalt track but you ought to just go to it they think oh you're just turning left all the time ah oh, there's a lot to it oh, yes. a lot involved and you see the emotion and the people that have done it all their lives and the teams they have I mean you know here's greatness here you know uh, you need to support it and get out and see it try it you'll like it there. yeah I think you know and and uh, I think our biggest enemy today guys is is the phones and the, the iPads and whatever it all is. And, and mm. I still have a flip phone, which is not good. I know my grandkids <laughs> said, you need to, Grandpa, you need to change. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if these kids could go out and watch dirt track racing sometime, you know, I think maybe they would they would see maybe what we saw, you know, years ago. I think it would. They might like go real go-kart racing. Yes. Instead of <laughs> like the <laughs> places right. you go now, this is a real exactly. go-kart racing. You betcha. Anything else you guys would like to put out there? Uh, just that, that uh, our, our family, and I know your family too, appreciates us so much getting in the Hall of Fame. And uh, yes. if this helps racing at all, uh, God bless us all, because we, we all love racing. You know? yes. Once right. it's in your blood, it's in your blood. Yes, it but is. But again, thank you. Appreciate it so you much. Bet. Skip's contributions most notably came behind the lens of a camera, snapping photos of Kansas City Racing's most significant moments at Lakeside and I-70. 
He was a track photographer at both those racetracks. His contributions to CARB are enormous. 25 years ago, he organized a golf tournament to help raise money for CARB. The event has been significant over the years in helping fund CARB and keeping it thriving. Skip has served many capacities in CARB, including president, and currently he is the blood bank <coughs> chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome our newest member of the Central Auto Racing Boosters Hall of Fame, Darwin Skip Richardson. Who would you say has had the biggest impact on your life in or outside of racing? Ooh, outside of racing? In or outside? In or. In or? Yeah. And you can take your time with these. Well, um, I pitted for a couple of years, you know, with some low budget teams, and we had fun, and it was fun. Uh, Tom Beerman and I got together, and I couldn't even tell you how we got together, but, uh, and we started, uh, you know, helping him, I started helping him, and I, at that time, Terry Bivens was driving, driving for him, and as far as racing, Tom Beerman and, uh, and even Terry Bivens got me hooked. I mean, hooked to the core. <laughs> and um, I went from there, and then Tom and I went to drag racing, and uh, you know, at that time, Tom, it was a period in Tom's life that he wasn't that good. Um, but we even built a drag car. I bought it. And we we built it, and uh, you know, love the man, but he's still one of my biggest influence. His son was an even bigger one. Uh, his son would come up with uh, Don Burnton built that motor, and and uh, he built the headers for it, and it looked like junk on that bike, but it had horsepower. And then I went and bought your high dollar hooker ones, uh -huh. chrome, good looking, <laughs> never <laughs> ran as good. I mean, that's the intelligence I was around at that time. Mm -hmm. So as far as racing, I would say Tom is. Uh, my biggest influence as far as personal would have to be my mom and dad. They were a big influence in my life. My dad had uh, a disease that uh, my sister and my brother died from. And my mom had uh, strokes, many strokes later in her life. And I ended up having to take care of her, but uh, they were the biggest influence. And now they have the approval approval of my wife, current wife. And uh, she has definitely influenced me lately. Thank you, Skip. Um, what would you like to be known and remembered for? <clears throat> I just think I want to be de uh, remembered for being dependable. Did a good job. And uh, work my butt off and uh, that's a hard you know as far as racing I love it I'm a racer to the hill if I could drive and I tried <laughs> that's why I went drag racing I, I, I would do it but you know my son wants to get back in it I can't help him but I'll support him in every way I can. Yeah. If you could relive one moment in your life, be it to enjoy it over again or to do it differently, what would you say that moment might be? <laughs> the up and down day we had when my mom at 3 a.m. fell in the hallway here. 
broke her hip, was moaning, and I was in the next room. And she woke me up, and I got up, and we ended up taking her to the hospital. They had surgery on her. And we had a big 50-lap race that night in Lakeside for the Chargers, and that was the big race of the year. And, uh, you know, going through the whole deal with my mom at the low, and then she comes into the uh, recovery area, and she told us to go on out there and winter for her. We go out to Lakeside Speedway, and he won that race. And uh, went down in the pits. I'm, I'm photographing her, you know, uh, video. Went down there, and Michael and I just said, you know. And then I went up to the hospital and spent the night with her. So, yeah, that, that was <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> roller coaster, but it, I will never forget that day. <clears throat> what character traits does it take to be a Hall of Famer? I believe hardworking, honest, um, there's so many other, like, not only just a good driver, but I think uh, nowadays, uh, you have to be fan responsive. And these kids are our future. And I love to go out Lakeside and see them and, and the other tracks. And the kids come in the pits and they get to sit in the cars. Absolutely. I love, love watching that. Yeah. I, I think that's, you know, be, a, be somebody that uh, they can be proud of and honestly proud of. Not somebody that you pay him a high dollar and then turns around and abuses women or something like that. That's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> That's trash to me. Right. But uh, there's so many out there that I can name that are like that. What's the biggest risk you've ever taken that you feel paid off? Biggest risk? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That ended up working out well for you. <laughs> Probably marrying the love of my life, but uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I would have to say uh, when I started the photography in '84, Bill Bruton was selling them up in the stands, so the. You know, all the wives are down in the pits. So they'd have to really rush up there and rush back before they close the pits. And I thought, why don't we sell them in both places? So I brought my van <coughs> and I pulled it in the infield and set it up. Got me a gal to work. You know, got a, somebody to work up the stands. I sold them both. And Bill Bruton came up to me one day and said, I don't know why I never thought of that. <laughs> so I'd say that was a risk, but it, mm -hmm, it yeah, paid off. Paid yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. What do you feel is the biggest evolution that is taking place in racing during your lifetime? Oh boy. I'm hoping it's what we're seeing for this season coming up. We've got five tracks that are having the same rules. Where I can go on Friday night and race someplace, Saturday night and race someplace, Sunday to race someplace. I think that is a great deal where these tracks are working together uh, mm -hmm. instead of trying to cut each other's throat. I believe that's the newest thing to come about I see happening. I agree. I like that. That, that uh, he's the first one to say that yeah. evolution is yet to the, the biggest evolution is yet yeah. to come. I, I really like that. Yeah. Skill. I hope I agree. it is. Hope it is an evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my last question uh, for sure. this segment. Uh, what would you say is the best advice you can give to the next generation of generation of racers? Racers. Mm -hmm. Work hard. 
study. Uh, learn from your peers and don't go out there and try to win the race the first time. Learn everything you can learn and then get up there. Once you get that first win, it seemed to come easier after that, but it still takes hard work. Yeah. It's not, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people in the stands, they think, okay, he didn't crash the car tonight. He really doesn't have anything to do to it. <laughs> really, I mean, there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. You got to go from one end of that car to the other, every nut and bolt. So you have to be dedicated. And I think that's the yeah. traits that you need now. Thank you, Skip. Yeah, that's what we're here. Skip, once again, let me uh, congratulate you on being inducted into the Carve Hall of Fame. I know it's a great honor. It is a very great honor. For anybody in the Kansas City racing scene. And like I say, congratulations, Skip. Well, thank you very much. I, I can't uh, express enough the feelings I have for it. I've went to every induction ceremony, and I hope to be at a few more. Here we go. What's your top two favorite bands or artists? Oh, the Beatles and Chicago. Very nice. Top two favorite movies? Actually, Bohemian Rhapsody and the Hotel Transylvania. All right. What's your favorite vacation spot? The racetrack. <laughs> nice. Uh, what's your favorite non-race car you've ever owned? Oh, wow. I had a 64 Super Sport. It was awesome. Cherry red. And dirt or asphalt? Dirt. <laughs> I think I already knew the answer to that one. OJ, guilty or innocent? Oh, my. <laughs> All right. Top two favorite bands or artists? Uh, ACDC, um, Garth Brooks. Top two favorite movies? Uh, Point Break and Pulp Fiction. Favorite vacation spot? Uh, be Rangawa and French Polynesia. Dirt or asphalt? Definitely dirt. OJ, guilty or innocent? Absolutely guilty. All right, thank you, sir. Six and six, do you appreciate it? Your top favorite two bands or artists? Queen and uh, ZZ Top. Your top two favorite movies? Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody and uh, Vacation with Chevy Chase. All right, well, you led right into the next question. What's your favorite vacation spot? Vacation? What is a vacation? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would, uh, I'd have to say... Probably someplace with a beach, because that's where my wife always wants to be. All right. What is your favorite non-race car you've ever owned? I've got two street rods that I really like, a 41 Willys and a 55 Chevy. All right. Dirt or asphalt? Asphalt. OJ, guilty or innocent? Guilty. All right, Philip. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. What's your top two favorite bands? Oh, that's easy. The Revolution and Earl Smith. Top two favorite movies? Uh, Dances with Wolves and Time to Kill. Favorite vacation spot? Oh, New England. Uh, favorite street car, non-race car you've ever owned? I uh, 74 Vega. Dirt or asphalt? Dirt. <laughs> What's your favorite fl flavor of ice cream? Vanilla. All right. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. Are you ready for this, Sharon? Yes. All right. First question. Who are your two top favorite bands? Jason Aldean. Well, he's not. Well, he's got a bad. Jason Aldean and uh, Carrie Underwood. Top two favorite movies. The Notebook and the Titanic. Favorite vacation spot. Vegas. Uh, your favorite non-race car you've ever owned. Uh, non-race car. I would say my first Camaro, which was an '82 Z28. Dirt or asphalt. No. Dirt. Favorite flavor of ice cream. Uh, better pecan. All right. Those are the tough questions answered here by Sharon Burlington. Thank you very much, Sharon. <laughs> top two favorite bands. I like Firehouse Metallica. All right. Top two favorite movies. Uh, man, that's a hard question. I like Infinity Wars and Top Gun. Uh, favorite vacation spot. Florida. Okay. Dirt or asphalt? Dirt. 
and your favorite flavor ice cream uh chocolate and one more just for fun because i know you won't be offended by this one oj guilty or innocent guilty <laughs> all right thank you sir all right your top two favorite bands Oh, Garth Brooks and, uh, oh gosh, Waylon Jennings, I think, is one of the best. Nice. Uh, top two movies. Oh, I don't know. I ain't been in no movies in 40 years, so I really don't. No, no race of movies, no uh, Big Wheel or no, any of those? No, no, <laughs> not really, no. Huh? All right, no. favorite vacation spot? Uh, probably Daytona. Uh, your favorite car you've ever owned that's a non-race car? Uh, I had a 72 Ranchero. That was probably my best best car that I had. I liked it. All right. Dirt or asphalt? Dirt. <laughs> Need <Yeah>. I ask? <laughs> I mean, I like asphalt too, but dirt's, dirt's, you know, where I come from. Sure. Favorite flavor of ice cream? It's a hard one. Chocolate. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Your top two favorite bands oh doobie brothers three dog night top two favorite movies top gun gladiator favorite vacation spot walt disney world (laughs) what's your favorite street car you've ever owned a non-race car you've ever owned oh chevrolet impala my first car what year 69 nice uh dirt or asphalt oh dirt favorite flavor of ice cream Ah, chocolate chip cookie dough. All right. Thank you very much, Zeke. Well, thank you. Top two favorite bands. Bands? Oh, or artists. Oh, I guess the Beatles probably would be one. And uh, Rolling uh, Rolling Stones. All right. Top two favorite movies. Oh, John Wayne movies, I guess. The Western movies. Uh, Rio Bravo. Bravo. And uh, probably Top Gun. I like Top Gun. Yeah. Top Gun fans here. All right, what's your favorite vacation spot? Uh, Knoxville, Iowa. <laughs> All right, good answer. Uh, what's your favorite street car, non-race car you've ever owned? Uh, 64 Chevrolet Super Sport. Yeah. Dirt or asphalt? Asphalt. That surprises me. That caught me off guard there. Uh, uh, I mean, my, our 96 car and our 86 car were very important to us, but that was my first real fast car. And it was a street car, and we drug raced it a lot. So, yeah, I'd say it'd be my favorite car. Yeah. All right, favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, vanilla. Boxers or briefs? Boxers. <laughs> the uh, band that uh, they found their old van on uh, the movers. Oh, you know, the, the Aerosmith? Right. Yes, who? Is it Aerosmith? Aerosmith. Yeah. I loved them. I loved uh, Moody Blues. They were very good. I had a number of number of them, but those are Bob Seger's one of my top. All right. What would you say your top two favorite movies are? Ooh. The Five Sullivans is one. Uh that's an old movie, but it, it is a tearjerker. It'll get you to the core. And I don't know, I liked uh Days of Thunder. Oh yeah. Uh, what would you say your favorite vacation spot is? Oh, Daytona Beach, Florida. Uh, well, I used I used to go all the time, and uh, down in the Georgia area, I love it down in that area. What's the favorite non-race car you've ever owned? Street car. Nineteen fifty-six Chevrolet Bel Air two-door sedan. I love that car. Dirt or asphalt? Ooh. Uh, I prefer dirt a little bit because asphalt's getting to be worse. One one lane racing a lot, but uh, I still love any kind of racing, to be honest with you. Favorite flavor, ice cream? <laughs> Chocolate. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> John Green was spinning out with somebody, and I was down to one too. Well, I didn't see John. So I saw this guy, and he's headed right for me. I started ducking, getting out of the way. Yeah. And he goes by, and then all of a sudden, I got John Green coming out. <laughs> and I went, sucked it in. He went right by me and just, oh, really? just missed me. Oh, man. I went over to his car. I said, John, 
Let me wipe the shit off. <laughs> <laughs> Great, great. Well, we just finished up our Hall of Fame inductee uh, interviews and videos. Uh, still have to compile everything, but I just wanted to uh, thank Mike Kraft very much for uh, helping out the video and, and doing everything you did and helping uh, capture these moments for these inductees. And so we'll have them available in a couple different versions. And Mike, how do you feel the interviews went and, and the project? And, and what, how do you think this is going to end up? To me, I think this may be, I was looking back through some of the stuff on YouTube, and believe it or not, I think, and I can't hardly believe it, I think this is maybe my sixth or seventh year that I've had the opportunity to do these, and I just feel honored and blessed that the uh, CARB would ask me, to CARB Hall of Fame would uh, include me in getting to do this, do these, and you too, Justin, because uh, they are so much fun. And you get to learn so much about the history of these people. You might know the name or something, but they're just so much fun to do. And you get the opportunity to meet these people. This is what racing was. And uh, I feel honored. Well, thank you, Mike. It's been a pleasure making it with you. And, and uh, we're very thankful that, that the Hall of Fame approached this and, and let us do this. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Justin.